Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Soulstorm cast this side of East Yorkshire. And it's over one versus one on Tranquility's End. Over in the Necron corner, we've got Focus. Whereas over in the Space Marine corner, we've got Alex UK. Alex going to go for a smattering of Scout Marine squads, a Servitor and a Chapel Barracks. Whereas the Necron player is going to go for a couple of Builder Scarabs, Necron Warriors and Dewar Plasma Generators. So before the game starts, I do want to apologise, I do have a quite significant cough at the moment. <laughs> well, it's like a combination of a cough and tonsillitis, so if I do end up having coughing fits through this game, just, just, yeah, that, I get sick sometimes, I'm a human being and whatnot. Anyway, this map is really, really good for the Necron player. Loads of space and distance in between the two bases over here, which will give the Necron player plenty of time to get his plasma generators up and running before any harassment can come from the Space Marine player. So it looks like that space we play is going to go for just purely scouts at the moment. Going to be capturing all the strategic points near their base. I mean, there's a grand total of 1, 2, 3, 4, as well as a relic on top of that. So good to get those points as quickly as possible to get the economy online. Force Commander will be coming out. But other than that, nothing too special. Necrons are going for 5 plasma generators instead of their traditional 4. So they'll be getting their economy up and running just as quickly as the Space Marine player will be able to. Also, we'll be able to get their squad cap up nice and quick with these strategic points. Scouts are going to be doing some, <coughs> how would we say, some aggressive expansion into one of the natural strategic points for the Necron Warriors, or Necron player. And these scouts can't exactly do much in the way of backwards and forwardsing early on in the game. No attack, no defence. Just going to have to see what they can grab before these scouts can ferry them away. Necron Warriors now out on the field. Lovely colour scheme from Focus. Lovely teal, green and blue. Very aesthetically pleasing to mine eyes. Scouts over here capturing this listing post. This listing post will be built up on top of it. These scouts will be coming out being slightly depressed at not being able to see their own obelisks going on top of those places. Bill scouts over here. Going to be slowly whittled down. Another squad of scouts will come over here to double the punch of their little bolter guns. Necron Warriors slow but surely making their way out over towards these scouts. Pound for pound, these Necron Warriors will take them out quite quickly. But the scouts aren't here to really do all that much in the way of physical damage. They are just here to be a nuisance and a pain in the backside. One scout model does go down. This will also probably have to run away. Scouts over here trying to look, see if they can decap it before if he's built up. And yes, indeed, they do manage to get that decap in before an obelisk is built on top of that. Necron Warrior has been spammed out. Another plasma generator going down. Necron Lord on the field will force these guys away quick sharpish. Strategic point has been decapped though, so they've done their bits and bobs. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six in total, which is a lot of plasma gens, considering that we are about three minutes into the game. Force Commander out on the field, being affected by this negative cover. He's doing that retreat in, um, what is it? Was it Prometheus, that, that alien film where they're running away from that falling ship? And rather than running left or right, they run directly opposite it, which... Yeah, not not, not, be not the best way to um, run away from something that's coming towards you. Yeah. Anyway, on the Space Marine side, we've got a couple of Space Marine squads on their way. In fact, a grand total of three in total once these guys come from the Chapel Barracks. 15% and 70 green money for the... 97% and zero green money for the Space Marines. So really, really hamming the Tier 1 at the moment. Going to go for their first Plasma Generator at this point. Force Commander back on this side of the map. Go and see what Necron Warriors they can bash about. Second skull of Necron Warriors out slow, but surely meandering towards these guys. Scouts still being a massive pain over here. Going to be chased away. Scabs once again trying to capture this place. Space Marines tickling this Necron Lord. He's not having much of it though. We'll chase these guys away. A lot of firepower for the Space Marines at the moment. Firmly placing themselves into Tier 1 with all these listing person, these squads on the field at the moment. Necrons won't be able to push out of their home base very far with all these Space Marines on the field. Have gone for a summoning car, so flayed ones are available for them at the moment. Might be an idea to take into Tier 2 while these Space Marines are so firm into their infantry at the moment. But then again, this is a lot of lads to contest with, so hard to tear up when there's an assault like this going on. Necrons do teleport away. We'll probably abandon this obelisk to the fate 
that is probably going to be followed, which is death by a thousand bottle guns. Flared ones on the way at the moment. Will help keep these Marines at bay with cutting off their retreating path and whatnot, and also tying these guys up, preventing them from firing with their bottle guns. There's a lot of Necron Warriors at the moment. They're all being auto reinforced. A little bit cheaper. 35 green money compared to the 50 blue money of the Space Marines. So we'll be able to keep these lads alive for a lot longer, especially with their rebuild, re rebuilding, their reanimation protocols. Necro Warrior, that Lord, sorry, teleporting around the back of these guys. I'm gonna force them back into the river, getting their boots all wet. Necro Warriors, slow but surely, marching onwards, forming this conga line as they don't quite know how to navigate past this little crevasse. Necro Warriors don't mind standing in negative cover. They don't affect. They're not affected by positive or negative cover. Just quite happy just to get in the mix of it. Flared ones teleporting around the back. And by the time they get out of the ground, the Space Marines have already done a little bit of a leapfrog over them. Although this pushback will give the Necrons plenty of time to build up what they need to do. Now we're going to go for triple plasma generators, armory, and also tier two, sir. As well as some frag grenades, so lots and lots of upgrades going on at the moment. Plasma pistols, bionics. Yes, my so Lord. these guys are going to be a lot more chunkier, a lot more beefier. Their sergeants with their plasma pistols as well, helping the DPS against these heavy infantry. Necro player also going to go for an awakened monolith. So tier two popping for both players more or less at the same time. Flared one's going to be teleporting back to the Necro monolith. Will be probably popped back in there in the oven, shall we say, ready to come out to play later on in the game. Necro Warrior just getting back up out of the shower. But the more has been shot straight back down. Necro Lord teleporting around the backside. Has not got any upgrades at the moment. We'll probably be waiting for a little while later for that. Flayed One's now been teleporting a little bit further back now. We'll give them more chance to get out of the ground. Get a couple of slashes into these space greens. These listening posts have not been upgraded apart from the ones on this side. Might want to get this one upgraded just to help the defensive falling back and whatnot. Flared ones over here having a frag grenade been thrown on them, keeping them stationary for a little while. Plasma pistols from the Force Commander doing some serious work to the arm of these flared ones. Big squads of Necron Warriors there. Can't quite keep up with these guys at the moment, but they don't necessarily need to keep up as when they get into this base, Space Marines will have nowhere else to go. Space Marines continue retreating while well, then the Necrons can just start bashing whatever it is within range at the moment. Sacred Artifact on the way. Chaplain coming out. Grey Knights as well. So a little bit of anti-close combat. Well, so not anti-close combat, I guess, but... An answer to the flayed ones from the Space Marine uh, perspective. All the Necron Warriors go away. Flayed ones not quite got their jumping juice online at the moment. Will probably go the way of the dinosaur. Dear, oh dear. Not quite having the hustle to get out of there anytime quickly. Necron Warriors are kind of chilling out over here. Listing purse being slow but surely bashed by this Necron Lord. Might not be able to get the kill on it. No, will not be able to. We'll teleport away back over here, preventing these scouts from capturing this critical location in the middle. Going to see a greater summoning car coming from the Necrons. Potential to get some destroyers out on the field. With all these Space Marines and Grey Knights, some destroyers would be much appreciated. At the moment, they haven't gone for any of their upgrades at the moment, so they would be able to take it to missile launchers with relative little problems. If you can bait those missile launchers out, then that will deny them having the chance to upgrade into plasma guns. Listening post over here, slow but surely being bashed. Necron Lord, not the best at putting his way through the armor of buildings. Smite going down over here. Necrons will probably want to get out of there as quick as possible. The morale has been broken. Whole squad wipe going from the um, chaplain and his grey knights. Necron Lord also falling down. Lots and lots of plasma pistols making extremely quick work. And the smite is still going on around the area. It's like an area of effect damage. And it kind of just goes on for like a fair while. Those Necron Warriors going back in there. Not the best idea. Forbidden Archive on the way. Necron Monolith being built up. Oh, sorry, uh, Necron Lord being built up. If this Forbidden Archive is able to get a Resurrection Orb at Tier 2, I can't for life me remember. But if we can get that online, Necron Lord teleports over here, resurrect all these lads. 
mean, that's the only way they're really going to get a decent army up in time to defend themselves from this Space Marine squad. 116 and 40 compared to the 145 build speed. Necron Lord back up online at the moment. Let's see what he's got to play with at the moment. Victory. Just going to teleport back in, so no resurrection off for him. Double flayed ones jumping in the midst. Space Marine's been absolutely and totally surrounded. Will have to fall back. There is a lot of damage for them to contend with, even with their plasma guns and pistols. Got some missile launchers in their units now. In fact, actually double missile launchers for one squad. Double missile launchers again. Yeah, just, just six missile launchers in total, so nothing in the way for them to be able to combat what's going on. Committing a little bit too much in that regard. Going to go for Phylactery, a Phase Shifter and a Lightning Field. So no Resurrection Orb. It's the standard mix for the Necron Lord, really. Good DP... Uh, not DPS. Good DPS denying capabilities with his Lightning Field. Able to keep himself alive with his Phase Shifting. Also increases his Health Regen. It's a general nuisance build for the Necron Lord, really. Do have some Immortals on the field. And a Tomb Spider as well. Flared ones going back into the Necron Oven. Rhino Transport will have a little bit of difficulty managing their way around these Immortals. Grey Knights will have to send those boys a pack in. We want to keep that Rhino alive and well. <coughs> yeah. Sun Sliders, I get at least twice a year. Once during the spring, once during the autumn. It's not pleasant. Not entitled to get them removed neither, as the NHS say. You've got to have Ton Sliders at least a good six times a year. Get rid of them. So I apologise. Feel my pain, boys and girls at home. Anyway, these rhinos see all these flared ones and think, nah, mate, we're not getting involved in that. Way too much. Move out away of them for a little bit. And then with their slow movement speed, get out your rhinos and then start firing them from a distance. Too much by the on the field. Anything that's being killed now will be quickly snaffled up by the Tomb Spider. Allowing them to build back up the Necron Warriors. And they've got a maximum amount of their squad cap at the moment. Necron Lord marching in good stead. Teleporting around the back, going to be tying up the Chaplain. Is it Chaplain or was it the Librarian? Now, we've got some heavy bottle guns on these lads. Necron, oh sorry, flared ones falling as quick as you like, but the Tomb Spider picking them up in good stead as well. Do you like how the Rhinos are behind the Space Marines at the moment, keeping them away from these Immortals. Flared ones under the protective cloak of phase shifting from this Necron Lord will allow them to get close and personal. Four minutes until Rhino transport being destroyed by these Immortals over yonder. Blade One's now getting in nice and cl and close. This poor heavy bolter guy in a bit of danger. These Flayed One's being teleported in. I'm a mortal while they're getting out of the ground, but the moment they get out of the ground, that is a lot of DPS for them to contend with. They're going to be absolutely wiped out quick as you like. Mortal's going to turn their attention towards these guys. Necron Lord has a little bit of a damage reduction to ranged attacks with his phylactery or whatever you call it. Double Tomb Spiders out now. All these dead and dying boys ready for recycling. Going for tier 3. Machine Cult on the way. More vehicle cap increases as well. Potential for some Predators. Necron's also going to go for tier 3. Quite comfortable just staying with their flayed ones at the moment. Big engagement going on. Double Tomb Spiders. Not wanting to get too close. They are both armed with their particle projectors. Which, look, let's be honest, I mean, does a fair bit of damage at range. Takes about maybe seven or eight hits for them to kill one Space Marine. Which sounds like a lot, but considering that it's off, off damage, I mean, these guys do serious damage at close range. But in a supporting capacity, five or six shots for one Space Marine, that, that's not terrible at all. This Space Marine, dead on the ground, but he's still higher morale. For a little while anyway. Nothing dampens the Adeptus Astartes spirits 
Only in death does duty end. Missile turret upgrade add-on being placed on these heavy bolters over here. Although the Necrons aren't looking like they're going to be pushing out anytime soon. Playing a bit of Animal Crossing, collecting all the farming whatnots on the field. We'll be able to make some serious squads sometime soon. Pariah's out on the field. Immortals going on the left side. Going to see if they can take care of these gubbins around the side. 60% build speed and 112 green money. Compared space between 154 and 79. Good stack of blue and green money for Alex UK. Predator on the field. Can be teleporting, I imagine, some Terminators over here. Or a Dreadnought, possibly. There we go, some Terminators out on the field. The late game units now out. Pariahs. Very, very decent. High health, high damage, and very quick considering that they are Necron units. Rhino being surrounded. Dear oh dear. Allowing the farmers to get close and cut up these lads as quickly as you like. Got to reduce their speed quite considerably with every slash of their wolf sives. Three spiders carry carrying on building up the Necron armies. Predators firing away into their flanks. Terminators over here being tied up by this Necron Lord. Oh, he hasn't gone for the John Cena beam. He's gone for that lightning arc, sir. Any, sir. He stores up any damage being given to him, and he just does general damage to the lads and lasses around him. Smoke grenades being used by the Rhino Transport, giving these guys a little bit of a defensive prospect at range. Barras actually wiping out anything and everything that they come in touch with. Smite going down on this area, though, will push these pariahs out of the zone of influence. Immortals focusing down on trying to take out this listing post. Flayed ones do teleport back. Prize might also want to do the same. For life of me, I cannot remember if they have access to a teleportation. I think that they don't, actually. I think, um... Yeah, I don't think they have, they have access to it, because th these prize are only half neck on half human, if you want to go for the old law. But, getting a groove on, getting a shimmy and a shake, are able to retreat this pariah over here, narrowly surviving. And that regeneration rate is incredibly quick. We'll be back in motion with no time flat. One super spider has gone down in that engagement. We'll start going for some riffs. Necron's potentially going to lose their pariah squad at the moment. A little bit cornered off. I've got some very good units on the field at the moment. In the form of Tomb of Spiders and whatnot, but lacking in the uh, Foot Soldier department, I would say. I mean, 17 squads, cap for the Space Marine, compared to 14. So, what have you spent it on? Is it just flayed ones and, and immortals? Iron Rift as well, I suppose. Probably going to be chasing around these Grey Knights. But the Space Marines over here, the Heavy Bolters, are going to provide some covering fire. Terminators as well. Power Fists in tow. Decent at range and at close combat. Necron Lord being an absolute nuisance. Wraith as well doing what they can. Predator being repaired by the Servitor over here. And I would say that Space Marine players probably got the advantage at the moment. In the form of they've just got the best kind of mix of units. Everything that the Necrons can throw at them at the moment. They do have an answer for. In the form of at least a soft counter. It's energy core though. Going for a essence of the Catan Gods. Will allow this Necron Lord to turn into a essence of the Nightbringer. Will allow him to basically destroy anything that the Space Marine player can throw at him for a little while. Any damage that's done to him, or any damage that he does, should I say, does regenerate him back to full health as well. Two Spider working overtime. Building up anything and everything. Going exclusively for Immortals at the moment. Very little in the way of vehicles at the moment, though. Like I say, maybe some destroyers out, but like we said before, all these missile launchers, not sure if it'd be the best idea. But then again, with all these flared ones that they've got in the Necron oven, would be able to keep these guys occupied. Especially when that essence of the Nightbringer comes out. But uh, retreating from the moonwalking Necron Lord, all these immortals moving forward, trying to try and ignore all these space marines. Going for a little bit of a base trade at the moment. Trying to knock out bits and bobs of these 
uh, Space Marine economies. Space Marine player turning into the essence of the Deceiver. Going to temporarily turn some of these lads and lasses against them. As well as teleporting around, creating some fake units. Going to make a fake Necron monolith. Which for all intents and purposes, the Space Marine player does not know if it exists or not. But will that still knock these guys over? Still very impressive. Immortals over here. Taking out loads of Space Marine vehicles and whatnot. Doing a fair bit of damage to the Land Raider. Won't quite do all that much when these Assault Veteran Terminators are on the field though. Essence of the Deceiver, causing all sorts of mischievous mayhem as these flared ones come out on the field. We do have a real Necron Restore Monolith on the field now, so... Relic Unit versus Relic Unit, and this is going to be a serious problem for the Space Marines to deal with. Even with all their missile launchers, Monolith is nothing to turn your nurse apart. Serious damage, especially against all these clumped-up units. I have to start... Keeping their lads in areas like this. Maybe spread them out a bit more. But then again, these flared ones that are out on the field. Do kind of cause them to have to bunch up a bit. Do have a Lord Destroyer out on the field as well. Will be able to take control of some of the vehicles. Not sure if they'll be able to take control of a Land Raider though. I think a, a Relic Unit is exempt from the uh, Lord Destroyer's influence. Gonna go for some more Builder Scabs as well. I've got two Lord Destroyers on at the moment. So Six Double Predators will be easy pickings for these guys. <coughs> there we go, Predator. Being taken over by the Lord Monolith. Or the Lord Destroyer, sorry. They've been destroyed actually, sir. So we'll take that. The tide looks like it's turning a little bit on the Space Marines. Looks some more still focusing on this listing post over here. Tomb Spider firing away out of these guys, but will be taken down by the missile launchers. Restore Monolith. Teleporting back home. Ah, teleporting back home. Does look like both the Predators have gone down. Do a whirlwind firing at a distance. Single Pariah been thrown underneath the tricks and tank. Bits and bobs of the Land Raider, and it's still holding firm with double servitors on the repair round its backside. Five minutes until taken whole victory. And yeah, the, the, the Space Marine player still got a sizable force on the field at the moment. Gonna be rebuilding that Necron Lord. Not sure how long the cooldown is for the essence of the Nightbringer or the, or the Deceiver. Lord Destroyer being fired at. We'll probably want to back up a little bit. It's not a vehicle, so we'll not be repaired by these Builder Scarabs. We'll be repairing or rebuilding some more for eyes as well. Hellfire Dreadnoughts providing some long-range distance support, I suppose. Lord Storm going to try and move in. See if he can take control. Oh, it doesn't take control. It just does a little bit of damage from a distance. That little... Staff shaking ability that he has. Necron Lord just going toe to toe with this land raider, not giving one iota of, of care. Four minutes until Restore Monolith, pumping out some more Lord Destroyers as well. Real shame that they lost both their Tomb Spiders. Maybe we might, might need to build up a second Necron Monolith. If anything, just to constantly pump out Necron Warriors while all this is going on. I mean, they've got quite a bit of flirt at the moment, not able to spend all the money that they want to spend. As they only have really one part of unit production. And this is a hell of a lot of stuff for one monolith to take on. Got a surprise on the field and a Lord Destroyer as well. But even that's not enough. But a significant amount of Builder Scarabs will keep that guy online. Although with this orbital bombardment just flowing in. Those scarabs won't be surviving for very long. Lord Destroyer firing at a distance. Space Marines armed with Heavy Bolter and Missile Launcher. Assault Terminator veterans 
being smashed around by these ultimate bombardments just as much as the monolith is. Look at that health regen. Not taking any damage, more or less. Necro Lord jumping in. Could be tanking some of the damage. Countdown for Alex UK in both critical locations and strategic points. Necro will have to do something in the next two and a half minutes. But look at that beautiful concave. Firing everything and everything. In the name of the Emperor. Essence of the Sea have been chosen again. Going to be causing these guys to turn their attention to each other. Forcing them to turn against Comrade, Kith and Kin. Fake restored monolith being popped in the middle as well. Will distract these lads as they auto-target it. Will be blasting these guys. And that's just a lot of green. I should put a seizure or epileptic warning on the screen at the moment. This is this is quite bright. Focus does throw out the GG there. Realising that no matter what he can bring out from the restore monolith at this point, won't be able to be de won't be in the position to decap anything at the moment, especially with these scouts with their plasma guns. Yeah, got two scouts, four plasma guns apiece. Any bill of scouts going over there? Will be taken down quick as you like. But this restore monolith is not going into that quiet night easily. Will be standing firm. Land Raider still more or less pristine, taking very little in the way of damage. Assault veteran terminators bashing away with their big heavy handed hammers. And the restore monolith being brought down to one third of it, well, one quarter of its health more or less. A one fifth. Fractures will never my strong suit. Automatically teleporting all the way back home. And Focus then surrenders. Oh, can't blame it. That last engagement lasted for a good solid 10 minutes, I'd, I'd like to say. Very exciting all the way around. I very much enjoyed uh, both players in this match. Cool. Anyway, my name's been Master Lunchak. Players always never chop. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.